So today we've come to the Somerset Levels. We were here last year with Zeiss Optics looking at the all new Zeiss SFL 40mm binoculars which had just been introduced at that point. Today we've come back with Zeiss Optics to look at the new SFL 30mm binoculars. Now when we were here last time we were joined by Toby Carter who was Zeiss's Wildlife Ambassador and I'm really pleased to say that Toby is back <laughs> with us again today. Thank you very much for having me. <laughs> oh, no, no, it's good to have you. Thanks for coming back. But I understand that since we spoke last time, your role with Zeiss has changed somewhat. Yes. I was just wondering if you could tell us a bit about how that has changed. Yes, yeah, so as of the end of October, I've joined the team full time as their business development executive that I run, just help with the nature side of things. Okay. Um, but when the opportunity arose, having been with Zeiss for a few years as an ambassador and their love of nature and everything, it was a it was no, it was a no-brainer to come and join the team, and I'm loving it ever since. I can imagine, can imagine that. Well, congratulations! Thank you very on much. That. <laughs> <laughs> it's completely different here today from the last time we came because we're now in February. A bit uh, colder. It's a bit colder. <laughs> I, I think. I mean, not not from nice looking what you're wearing. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> So it's completely from a birding point of view, it's very, very different. We've seen yes. a lot of birds today, yeah, yeah. but a lot of them, the species are very different from what we saw um, last time when we're down here in Yes, Germany. we've already had some booming bitterns, which we obviously have. were here last time probably, but yeah. then we're, we've had loads of ducks, all the gadwall, hundreds of gadwall actually, from the, over the back here, all the great white egrets and the marsh harriers that have been displaying above us. Oh, it's, yeah, it's been very good so far. So really what we're seeing now is we've got lots and lots of targets on which to test the 8 by yep. 30s. Yeah, against the 40s, yes. Against the 40s, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> so shall we crack on and see what we can find? Let's get going. Fantastic, so have a good plan. I've been using the SFL 8x30 here for about four hours and the first thing I have to say is that I have to remark in just how light and comfortable this binocular actually is. These weigh in at just 460 grams, now that is really really light. The 40mm version which Toby has here weighs in at 640 and for a binocular of that size that is light but obviously you're stepping the, the binocular down, you're stepping the size down 40mm to 30 um, so your size and the, the weight are decreased again. These really really are dinky, they're not much bigger than an average pocket binocular. A pocket binocular has an objective of usually around about 25mm. When you move up to a 30 like this the viewing experience is just so much better. The field of view that you get straight away in the light transmission is just in a different league from what you'll get out of any pocket, even a really, really good pocket. Comparing the 30 to the 40, you've effectively got the same optics in there, but the field of view is actually wider with these. Um, the image itself, very similar to what you get out of the 40. Last, last June when we first looked at the 40, really impressed with the colour saturation and the way that the, the image just popped out. And really, this is pretty much that, but in a smaller package. Now, Toby, this is my first outing with yeah. these, but I know that you've had ample opportunity to use this in the field, along with the 40. Yes. And yeah. it'd just be really good to get your take and, and how you feel about the two different models. Yeah, so I've used the 30 quite a bit recently. Um, personally, I use a 40 because I've just got larger hands, but the 30s are great as a pocket binocular because they are that small, you can just put it in your bag and away you go. And they, they're just so light, as you said already, and you touched on that they're around your neck, but you don't know they're there. But when you see something, you'll, they're there when you need them, but you just you, you forget they're there, they're great. Fantastic, definitely, that's the impression I get from them. And the other thing which is well worth your mention is the close focus, yes. because the close focus on paper, same as the 40s. Yeah, yeah, I think they're identical, but yes, they're, it's, they say that it's 1.5, but I think we've tested it. It might be a bit less, but we'll have to keep on testing that. I think it's less, yeah, yeah. Without actually measuring it, um, measuring it officially, I think they've been a bit sort of conservative there. I think it's better than 1.5. Mm. So, you know, any of us with an interest in dragonflies, butterflies, yes. when that season kicks in, yeah. you know, for an all round naturalist, I think these, or the 40s. Yeah, definitely. Really be I look winner. forward to that season coming. I can take a few layers off. <laughs> definitely. Yeah, I think you've got, what is it, 12 layers? Yeah, yeah almost, <laughs> almost. Yeah. <laughs> No, I'm really, really impressed so far. See, that's after about four hours use. So it'll be interesting to see how they, how they fare as the afternoon wears on. And into dusk, yeah, and definitely. And into dusk, yeah. Let's keep going. Yeah, let's go for <laughs> it. 
Okay, so what we also have here are the Zeiss DTI3 thermal cameras. Uh, there are two models, there's a 35mm and a 25mm. And what that means is the 35mm has got a slightly longer focal length on the camera than the 25 So the 35 will bring you closer into what you're looking at, whereas the 25 will give you a wider field of view. So for example, uh, if you're in a woodland, for example, you may benefit a little bit from that wider field of view. If you're looking over more open terrain, you might benefit a bit more from the longer focal length of the 35. Unlike a lot of thermal images, these can be used at daytime as well as during the night or at dusk. So effectively, you can use pretty much 24 hours. So obviously, if you're using in the dark, uh, you can use these to sort of locate wildlife that you wouldn't otherwise know was there. And if you're using them in daytime, as we have been doing this morning, if you're in a wooded area, um, a, a, an area with a lot of cover, you can actually scan and the, the, these will actually identify the location of any wildlife that might be sort of lurking within those areas. They're a thermal imager, but they're also a thermal camera. So you can you use these to locate what you're looking for, but you can also use them to record stills and video footage of your target as well. Uh, they've each got a four, a, four, a four times digital zoom, and the range of these, the 25 would pick up up to 800 meters away, and with the 35, anything up to 1200 meters away, which is impressive. Now, when it comes to locating wildlife, locating birds with these, Toby, I think you've had some pretty good results Yeah, yeah, with it's these. not been too bad. So uh, I use these back, uh, whenever I'm birding, I've got a 335 and I, it's always in my pocket. I take it with me wherever I go. But I took these to the Isles of Scilly in October um, and I found stuff like barred warbler and, and rose finch. Right. Just sat in like bramble bushes and gorse that I just would have walked past otherwise. But this is always in my pocket and even I use it a lot when I'm looking for jacksnipe and woodcock in marshy yes. areas or in woodland. And I'm just, I'm just looking, picking up the heat to signature, working out my reference points, and then I've got my scope and my binoculars, and I can pinpoint it and get great views without Fantastic. flushing them. No, that's excellent. I think that's exactly where, where something like this mm. has its benefits. Um, I was using the 25 at home a couple of nights ago, and I was watching Munt Jack, and I was watching yeah. Fox as well. Out in the fields, pitch black, I just wouldn't have known that those were there, yeah. that those were the other And ones. watching barn owls as well at night, or owls in general, is just fantastic. I yeah. can imagine, yeah, for owling, it's, it's got, that, got that written all <laughs> yeah. over it, really. I look forward to trying these out with night jars and stuff like that in the summer months. That'll I'll be, bet, yeah. I'll bet. So I think, really, if you're carrying one of these, if you've got your, your bins, you've got your scope, and you've got one of these as well, effectively, you can pretty much build 24 hours if you want you to. You can, yeah, yeah. It gives you that opportunity, and these have got a 10-hour battery life, which helps. Yeah, I've Sorry. noticed that. I've only charged mine up once, been using a few times over the last week, and I haven't had to recharge again. Yeah. Uh, so the battery life has been impressive. And it's comfortable in your hand as well. It is, yeah. It it's, is. it's ergonomic, and these are designed. The way that the control buttons are set out on the top, they're set out symmetrically. Um, so what that means is that you can use right-handed or you can use left-handed, um, yeah. which I think is really... Oh, we've just had an eagle fly over, way. so momentarily <laughs> distracted. We're, st we're still building while we're talking. <laughs> um, the way that these work, the view that you get through them, you've got options. You've got what they call white hot mode, black hot mode, red hot mode, or rainbow. And basically, they give you different colours. I, I find that um, I quite like, I don't know, but I quite like black. Yeah, black no, I agree. Black actually yeah. scanning. It's mm -hmm. so where your subject is black, effectively. Yeah, and then in a woodland, I tend to use white hot. Use white hot for that, yeah. 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 But also have the, the red hot tracker on it ready, and that helps as well. The red hot tracker is fantastic. What that actually does, that brings up a little, um, like a little red square. And that little red square will home in on any, any heat source. So that's really, really good for locating. So I've been tending to use that a lot for scanning and locating um, and then go on to the then go on to the, the black hot when I've actually found something yes. to yeah, see yeah. to actually identify what yeah. it is. Yeah, but I think with thermals, everyone thinks, oh, you're using that at night only. I use this, I'd say 80% of the time during the day. Whenever I'm out birding on a reserve, it's in my pocket, scanning the hedgerows and stuff that you'd normally just walk past because you're going you're gonna to find stuff that you'd normally miss. Definitely. Well, we, we've been using these. We've been using these already today. Yeah. Um, and when I was using one, again, in pitch blackness the other day near home, and there was a small, um, there was like a small heat source in a hedge. Mm -hmm. and it's not that it was a roosting blackbird. You know, <laughs> yeah, there you I, go. I, I would never have known that that was in there, but that's, no. what, and that's a small heat source and it picked it up. Mm. Um, you've also got the rainbow mode as well, which basically is very, that's very colorful mode. It, it, you know, the, the hotter bits will be red, for example. You've got cooler bits of yellow. Yep. It's got that mode as well. It, it just enhances your day-to-day -day birding experience throughout the day. Um, like I say, 24 hours you could basically go if you wanted to. It gives you that opportunity. 
No, I agree, definitely. So we're talking about enhancing a building. Shall we crack <laughs> yeah, on? Yeah, yeah. See what else we can find. <laughs> definitely. Shall we go for it? Fine, that sounds like a plan. <laughs> so we've had a really good full day down here on the Somerset levels. It's been a fantastic opportunity to really put the USFL 830s through their paces. Just to emphasise that these are available in 10 by 30 format as well. Um, so Toby, you've got the I've 40s. Got the 40s. Yep. the 40s, yeah. We had a really good in-depth look at the 40s last time. I remember the 40s really, really impressed me. The, the, the image was just so punchy. Colour saturation was great. Handled chromatic aberration really, really well. These do exactly the same thing, but in a smaller, lighter package, which makes sense because it's the same optic. It still uses ICE's UHD ultra high definition optics, same as its bigger brother does here. Um, these, as I say, the difference really comes down to size and weight and field of view. It's wider field of view and you've got 460 grams weight rather than 640 grams weight. As I said earlier, in terms of size and weight, these are not much above a pocket binocular, but in terms of performance, they will blow any pocket binocular out of the water. They really will. The image is just so punchy. They're so easy to handle. I tend to use an 8x32 regularly, so I like that sort of 30, 32 type binocular. And I would say this is just about as good as, it, good as I've seen with a binocular of this type. Um, I could use this all day long without noticing it was around my neck. And they've got that great property, which any really top optic should have, in my opinion, which is that when you're looking through the binocular, you forget that you're looking through a binocular. And that's what you want. You want to forget that there's glass there. And these actually do that. You think that's a fair summary, Toby? I think you, you, you hit the nail on the head there, but let's say size is the main thing. You can put these side by side now, there yeah, you go. You can the see that. <laughs> the 40s and the 30s. But everything that these binoculars have that we spoke about last time we came here, they've crammed it into that as well. And they're, they're excellent. You, there's not often, there are not many times where you, can, you go, wow. And when you, when you yeah. use these and these as well, like, yeah, these are, these are the real deal. I agree, they're a fantastic birders binocular, and what we've been doing, we've been actually using them for birding all day long. We've been here for about seven hours now. Probably, yeah. It's been a good full, full day, and we've seen, seen some really good stuff. We should yeah. mention the birds that we've seen. There's, uh, the levels at this time of the winter, loads of waterfowl. Oh, really, at the moment, it was this potcher, this shoveler, gap, yeah. there's tons of ducks. And then there's the rarer duck, there's a, the American widgeon over the other side yeah. that showed very well in the light. Yeah, the nice great male. views, really, really yeah, yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that came out well. <laughs> loads of great white eager, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it, loads of lapwings as well, which we fine about here. We have done marsh harriers have been up, yes. there's been a lot of marsh and harrier activity. As well, and yeah, the, uh, definitely. So it's been good. Bittens. Yeah, earlier in the day, yeah. they were quite vocal, really, weren't they? The best Quite ones. early, but yes. Yeah, I was a little bit surprised myself, because <laughs> we're only in February, just to make that clear. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's, it's been a great day. Um, lovely optic great birds and yeah you can't say further than that really it's been great hasn't it yeah, it's been fantastic yeah i agree excellent so i hope you've enjoyed the video and i found the information useful we've had a great day here in the somerset levels the only downside being that i've now got to hand these back which would be something of a wrench if you have any queries at all about any of the zeiss equipment that you've seen please contact us clifton cameras either by phone by email or by live chat also, if you go to the tryzice.com website, you will be able to actually hire the equipment for 48 hours as well. So that's well worth bearing in mind. So I think all that's left is for me to say thank you very much for watching and happy birding.